the next point. We should ensure that whatever we see is clear. That means work is being done and we can see that it is in opposite direction. Good day, learners at home. You are welcome to another segment of Kaduna State e-learning program in chemistry, senior secondary school at the senior secondary school level. Today, we'll be looking at organic chemistry. You will recall in our previous lessons, we talked about organic chemistry where we said it can be categorized. We said the basis of the study of this organic chemistry is hydrocarbon. And we said this hydrocarbon can be categorized into aliphatic and aromatic. Where we made mention that the aliphatic hydrocarbon is, can, can also be categorized into saturated and unsaturated hydrocarbon. In our previous lessons, we did justice to the saturated hydrocarbon. Today, we want to pick one of the unsaturated group of hydrocarbon known as alkenes, and that's what we'll be looking at. We'll be looking at that topic under the following. we we'll start with, uh, we're going to see how to distinguish in the laboratory between the saturated hydrocarbons and the unsaturated hydrocarbon. We'll also see the various members of the alkenes family. We're going to see the IUPAC nomenclature of the alkenes. We're also going to look at the preparation of alkenes, the physical properties of the alkenes, the chemical properties, and lastly, okay, and lastly, we are going to look at the uses of alkenes. Before we continue, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Mr. Williams Ishaku. I still remember Mr. Williams Ishaku. Uh, to start with, let us look at what is this unsaturated hydrocarbons? Unsaturated hydrocarbons are compounds in which less than four other atoms are attached to one or more of the carbon's atom. They contain one or more double bond within the carbon atom that they are forming their bonds. And that is why they are called unsaturated hydrocarbon. These unsaturated hydrocarbons are two. We have the alkenes and the alkynes. For the purpose of this lesson today, we will be looking at the alkenes. Then subsequently, we will look at the alkynes. The, the alkenes. Let us look at the alkenes family. The alkenes, another name for the alkenes is olefins. If you don't want to call it alkenes, you can call it the olefins. These alkenes, and the, apart from the alkenes, the next hydrocarbon under the aliphatic hydrocarbon that is unsaturated is the alkynes and it is called, another name for it is acetylene. Acetylene, All, both of them are unsaturated hydrocarbon. Like I said, because we are, talk, we are going to deal with alkenes today, let us look at what is the general molecular formula of this alkenes family. The general molecular formula of the alkenes is CnH2n. And whenever you are naming this alkene family, they usually end with the suffix in. If it is the alkyne, they usually end with the suffix I. Now that we're talking about the alkenes, you discover it's just like you belonging to one family. You bear the names of the name of your father, isn't it? So it is with this organic compound. They also have a suffix that shows this is the homologous series of the family in which they belong to. Students, it is very, very important for us to know how to distinguish between the saturated and the unsaturated classes of hydrocarbon. To do that, in our respective laboratories, we make use of certain reagents. If we want to distinguish between the saturated hydrocarbon and the unsaturated hydrocarbon, the common reagent we use are potassium tetraoxomanganese 7 or bromine water. The color of the potassium tetraoxomanganese 7 is purple in color. To start with, you can look at the table. You have your test, your observation, and your inference. If you want to carry out the test, 
If you are given an unknown sample, plus acidified KNNO4, that is potassium tetra oxo manganese 7, or bromine water. The observation, after adding this region, if there is no visible reaction at all, then we can conclude that a saturated hydrocarbon is present. Don't forget, saturated hydrocarbons are alkenes. Next to that, if you want to know whether this is an unsaturated hydrocarbons, we make use of the same KMnO4 or bromine water. If on addition of KMnO4 to a given sample, it dechlorizes, that it, it changes the color of the KMnO4 from purple to colorless or bromine water from orange to green, then we can conclude by saying, look, alkenes or alkynes are present. They are the two unsaturated hydrocarbons that we have. However, since the unsaturated hydrocarbons are two, it is also very, very imperative for us to distinguish between the alkenes and the alkynes. To do that in the laboratory, we make use of this reagent also. When you are giving copper ammoniaca chloride or silver trioxo nitrate, to, when you add it to an unknown sample, according to our taste there, and your observation, if you look at your observation, there is no any visible uh, reaction that is taking place, you can conclude that, look, this is alkenes. Alkenes with a double bond. How about perhaps, again, paraventure, if after an addition of this copper ammoniaca chloride or silver trioxo nitrate, if you are getting a reddish brown precipitate, a reddish brown precipitate, then you can conclude that with ammoniaca, with copper ammoniaca chloride, you can conclude that look, uh, alkyne is present. With silver nitrate, you are going to get a white precipitate. So this is how to distinguish between the saturated and the unsaturated hydrocarbon in our respective laboratory. My student, when we are talking about this alkene family, they have their respective members. Usually, they usually end with a suffix in. The first member of the family corresponds with N is equals to two. And you can always derive the molecular formula from the general molecular formula CNH2N. The various members of this family start with carbon atom two, unlike the alkene that start with one. The alkenes and the alkynes, they start with carbon atom two, and they usually end with a suffix in. You can see, when it is having two carbon atoms, it is ethene. When it's having three carbon atoms, it is propene. When it is four carbon atoms, butene. When it is five carbon atoms, putene, pentene. When it is six, hexene. When it is seven, heptene or septene. When it is eight, it is octene. When it is nine, nonene. And then at your level, you are supposed to stop at 10, which is decene. They will have their respective various molecular formula derived from the general molecular formula, CN, H2N, that is all. Now, IUPAC nomenclature. Whenever we have compound of alkenes, how do we name them? IUPAC Lee. What do I mean by that? A system that is internationally recognized that this is the way compounds should be named in organic chemistry. We are guided by these rules. The rule number one, we call it the longest chain rule. This longest chain rule is saying the first thing to do when naming any organic compound that belongs to the class of the alkene is to identify who is the father of that compound. After identifying the compound, the next thing to do is to number. That is the numbering, number, uh, number two. We call it numbering rule. Then you number. In numbering, the requirement is this. You have to give priority or preference to the position of the double bone in non carrying out the numbering. Then rule number three is the, we call it alphabetical order. Where more than one or two substituents are attached in an alkene member, when you want to name it, the requirement of the law is that you should do that in an alphabetic order. Then the last but not the least is the comma or hyphen rule, where we are saying that you have to separate them by a comma or hyphen. Whenever you are naming an alphabet, it should be separated from a number using a comma and hyphen, as we are going to see an example. A typical example on how to name this compound, you will look at it, we have this compound above, we have uh, CH3, CH, 
with a double bond, C bracket CH3, with a CH bracket CH3, CH, CH2, and H. That is a compound, as you can see on the board. Now we want to name this compound. The first thing to do is to identify who is the father of this compound. My student, if you count starting from that very position, you will discover that the father of this compound, if you start counting, the longest continuous chain is six. If it is six, it means it is hexene. We have to state, the next thing we are going to do is to number. The position of the double bond is close by when you are moving from left, from, from, from right to left. So to do that, we start our numbering as you can see. One, two, three, two, six. At carbon three, we have a methyl. And at carbon four, we have another methyl. Because the methyl are two, we say di. If it is three, we say tri. If it is four, we say tetra. But for the purpose of this compound, it is two. So we call it dimethyl. Dimethyl. We have to state the position of the substituent. We say three, four, dimethyl. The father of the compound is hexene. So we say hex two in. Hex 2 in. Why are we saying hex 2 in? It is hex 2 in because the double bond is located at carbon 2. We can also see another example. The father of this compound, as you can see from the board, is having eight carbon atoms. And the carbon atom, within the eight carbon atom, there are two sets of double bond. We have to state the position because there are two sets. We have, instead of saying one uh, in, in, we are going to say dying because there are two. The first thing to do, according to our rule, is to identify who is the father. We have done that. And we say it's octane because it's having eight carbon atoms. The next thing to do is to number, and we say we give priority to the position of the double bone. As you can see, the double bone is close by when moving from left to right, and that is why we're starting and going this other direction. At carbon four, we have a bromo. Five, we have a chloro. Three, we have an iodo. If it is iodine, we call it iodo. If it is bromine, we call it bromo, as the case may be. You will recall in our previous lessons. Now, this compound, in terms of alphabet, bromine, B, should, we should start with bromine, followed by chlorine, which is C, followed by iodine. Then subsequently, we name the compound with the parent compound. Now, with this, we have uh, as our own compound as 4-bromo, 5-chloro, 3-iodo, or 3-5-diene. That is the compound. That is how to name the IUPAC nomenclature. You can see, student, it's as easy as anything if you can follow the lay down rules and regulation. Now, let us see, how do we prepare alkenes? Alkenes, the simplest member of the alkenes family is the ethene, like we mentioned. To prepare them, there are various methods, but for the purpose of this, we are going to look at three. The first one is dehydration of alkanol using concentrated tetraoxosulfate 6 acid. How? When we say dehydration, we are removing water completely from the ethanol, and you dehydrate it, you are going to get your ethene and your water. The acid we are using should be concentrated tetraoxosulfate 6 acid. We can also prepare our alkene using another method, in which we say dehydrohalogenation, or haloalkenes. When we talk about uh, halo alkene, we are talking about alkyl halides, compound of what? Uh, Substituents that are compound of alkenes, that are compound of halogens. To do that, you can react either chloroethane in the presence of potassium hydroxide with an, ethan with an ethanol. A reaction is going to take place to give us an ethene, and hydrogen chloride gas will be evolved. As, it, as you can see the reaction on the board, we have a CH3, CH2, 
H2Cl, potassium hydroxide, ethanol, to give us ethane, which, ethane, which is a, a H with a dash C, H, double bond, C, H, and H plus HCl. This is another method we can use in, man, in, in preparing our alkene. The last method we can use, this is an industrial method of preparing an alkene. It's called cracking of higher alkenes. If you have a higher alkenes, like the propane, CH3H8, you can crack it, you can break it up to form from, to, from a larger form of it to form a, the smaller forms of hydrocarbons like alkene. Like CH3H8 can be broken down to give us an ethene, CH2H4 plus hydrogen gas that will be evolved. It's a very good method that we can also use in preparing our alkenes as a member. Now, apart from that, it is also very important for us to look at what are the physical properties of these alkenes member. They have their respective physical properties. One of it is, one, they are, they, they, most of the compounds of these alkenes are colorless gases, ranging from carbon two to four. All of them are colorless gases. And as you move on, they change to liquids. As you move on to form wax, you know the candle wax that we use is also a member of the alkenes family. Another characteristic of this is that the alkenes are insoluble in water. They are generally insoluble in water. They don't dissolve in water. Unlike the alkenes, the, unlike the alkenes, the alkenes are soluble in what? Alcohol. They dissolve easily in alcohol. Their melting points and boiling point increase with increase in molar mass. As the molar mass of these alkenes member increase, their boiling point also decreases. Melting point also what? Increases. Vice versa. Now let us look at the, uh, the chemical properties of the alkene. Chemical properties of alkene, almost every organic compound is said to undergo a common reaction, and that reaction is called combustion reaction. What is this combustion reaction? Whenever an organic compound is reacting with an oxygen, as you can case, as you can as the case may be, an alkene can react with an oxygen to give us the only product that we stand to get whenever organic compounds are reacting is carbon four oxide and water. You can see our carbon four oxide, you can see our water out there with a sooty or smoky flame. Far more more than the one you obtain whenever you are using alkene. Now let us also see another chemical reaction. You will recall in our previous lesson, when we are talking about alkene, we said they undergo what we call substitution reaction. Alkenes, their case is different. They undergo what we call addition reaction. Now, how is this addition reaction? It's just like you are adding another compound into it. The reaction could be hydrogenation. When you are adding hydrogen, you can see the case. The double bond of the alkenes, ethene, can be broken when you react it with two molecules of hydrogen to give you an ethane, that is a single bond, hydrocarbon. And while you are doing that, a very high amount of uh, temperature is involved, and a catalyst known as nickel catalyst is involved in the reaction. You can use, uh, apart from the hydrogenation, you can use chlorination, you can use bromination, and so on and so forth. These are the various methods you can use to carry out the alkenes reaction. We have the halogenation, where you can react with bromine, two molecules of bromine to break down the double bond to give you that of the single bond, uh, one, two, dibromoethane. It's going to convert it from alkene to ethane, which is a member of the alkene family. These are the various chemical reactions. We can also use steam. When Eating react with steam, it is going to form what we call an ethanol. It is going to give us an ethanol. So that is, you can react your eating with water. The reaction is called hydrolysis to give you back an ethanol. So these are the various chemical reactions of alkenes. Now, we want to see what are the various uses of this alkenes family. One, the first one that is common that we know is that in our respective homes, we use this alkene in making what we call polyethines. You know polyethene bag, isn't it? Through a process known as polymerization. 
you can generate, you can form what is called polyethylene. When you go to the market, you want to buy something, that thing that they put for you is a byproduct, is a product of what? Alkene, which is ethene. Another one is that it is used as a source of plastic detergents. We use it in making plastic and what? Detergents that we use in washing our clothes or putting in things. You see PVC. One of the products that is used in making these PVC tanks is the ethene. Another important use of ethene, it is used as foil. We can use it as foil. In our respective homes, we use gases, uh, gas cylinders to cook, isn't it? It can be used as foil. We can also use ethene to quicken the ripening of fruits in fruits industry. If you want any fruit to get uh, to ripen up quickly, we add this ethene in it. My student, I believe you have learned a lot. We've seen what is uh, an alkene. We say it has a general molecular formula, CNH2N. We made mention when naming them, they end with the suffix in. And again, we saw the general properties and their chemical properties. Before I will wrap up this discussion, I would like to read out this assignment for you. Then you do it, then you get back to us. The first question there is, write an equation to show how ethene can be obtained from ethanol. Write an equation to show how ethene can be obtained from ethanol. Question number two, write the structural formula of the following. The I1 there is 2,3-dimethylbutuene. 2,3-dimethylbutuene. The next one is 2-bromo-4-chlorohex-5-ene. Please draw the structural formula of this compound. And the question number three, describe how you can distinguish between the saturated and the unsaturated hydrocarbon in your respective laboratory. You know that one. Whenever you finish and you want to get back to us, and uh, maybe you want to read further, you can use the following, Godin or Jokuku. You can use uh, uh, New School Chemistry by Esai Yao Ababio. You can also use Senior Secondary School Chemistry by S.T. Baja. We'll refer you to this book for further study. And in case you finish, you want me to come in and make my input, you can always contact me or send you a message through this WhatsApp. Williams Ishaku, 081-606-670-0920. Williams Ishaku, you can always get me through this via, uh, via our WhatsApp, 081 Six zero six seven zero nine two zero. Again, my student, I would like to advise you: stay safe. COVID nineteen is real. Please obey all the protocol laid down by expert. Remain blessed and keep focused. God bless you. Till I see you another time.